Hello everyone and welcome back to part 3 of my Tokyo Revengers analysis. I know it's been a long time but I still fully intend on completing this series as it's my first big project on this channel. In preparations for this video I reread the entirety of the Valhalla arc to remember anything I'd forgotten and rewrote my analysis for this arc so I can give you the best I've got. So without any further ado, please sit back and enjoy as we enter the gates of Valhalla together. Opening this next arc of the story with Hina's funeral as the first scene was quite bitter. Hina's fate is a driving force for the story so far and doubles down on Takamichi's efforts thus far, feeling a bit worthless. Saving Hina isn't a simple task, but a way to build up this ongoing mystery as to who exactly needs to be targeted. It's rather interesting for Toman's descent into an underground crime ring to be hinged on this guess who type of writing style, because Takamichi and Naoto are forced to think more critically about the situation. It creates a far more engaging dynamic than the story is given credit for because it's so tightly interwoven with Takamichi's character. The closer this mystery is to being solved, the more he develops. Speaking of development, Naoto and Takamichi pay a visit to Draken of this current timeline where he reveals that Kisaki is the main target to chase after. A moment like this feels as bittersweet as the last because it's another failure in Takamichi's face. Despite current circumstances, there is some beautiful imagery in this section displaying a clear difference in power and motive between Draken and Kisaki. The light of the outside shines to reveal a sense of duality inside of Kisaki versus Draken's commitment to the life he chose. All this paints a scene of what life of a delinquent leads to when things get out of hand. It leads to a dragon in a cage wishing it could fly amongst the clouds like the hawk it watches flying far above. Thanks to Dragon's information, Takamichi shifts his focus to Kisaki as the man himself is elected Toman's third division captain. Takamichi arriving at this moment in time to see this event firsthand is a bit cruel because things have already been set into motion. The inevitability of Hina's death seems unavoidable unless he can do something to stop it, which brings him to his boiling point. Although a somewhat meaningless outburst as Takamichi gets on the wrong side of Toman, in a strange twist, another is there to save him. Baji's appearance is as random as his departure from Toman is. His introduction serves to give more information on Toman's founding and sets up this arc's conflict. His connection with Mikey is especially important because of what Toman is to him. Toman is Mikey's big family, so its founding members, Baji, Pa, Draken, and Mitsuya, would act as an immediate family of sorts. They're the ones he holds closest to his heart, which gives way to a very dangerous deal for both characters. The deal is not only mutually beneficial, it's mutually destructive. Takemichi and Mikey are willing to go as far as they need to protect those they care for, drawing a connection between them once again as we've seen in the previous arcs. One puts himself on the line while the other places the lives of others at risk. What they're willing to give up is different, yet for their respective happiness. If Takemichi fails, then Kisaki kills Hina. If Mikey fails, then his family will never be whole again. This is another test of Takemichi's will and dedication to his promise. Unfortunately for the both of them, what happens next is completely out of their control. Kazutora's first meeting with Takamichi mirrors Mikey's. He takes Takamichi from his classroom, shows his power in the form of his abused subordinates, and nonchalantly treats others like they aren't even human, all with a smile on his face. Hina even appears, but Takamichi doesn't need her to interfere this time, a sign of his growth throughout these retries. Nevertheless, he's placed in a dangerous situation when arriving at Valhalla's hideout, and Baji is there to show the extent of his cruelty, even committing to the plan of killing Mikey. It's hard to believe that Baji is anything but a wild card to truly set this conflict between Valhalla and Toman in into motion, but his backstory with Kazutora shows that he's more than what meets the eye. Kazutora and Baji's flashback showing their greatest mistake when trying to steal Mikey a new motorcycle is both dark and somewhat confusing. Shinichido has been an important character for Mikey and someone Takemichi has been compared to. Seeing his demise for the first time makes us as an audience feel lost, like Mikey, I think. Shinichido only wanted to give his little brother something he wanted, but it's that same little brother's friends who put him down. It's not Mikey's fault, but one could argue he was the spark for this wildfire to happen, which is where Kazutora's resentment of his former friend began. During a first reading of this, it can be confusing. However, upon rereading and writing this, redirecting responsibility as a child to another can be understood perfectly. Of course, this reality hits both Kazutora and Baji differently, a sign of both characters differing levels of maturity and what they are willing to accept as their fault going forward, which brings about the ironic paralleled introductions of Kazutora and Mikey. It was a reminder of the connection these two characters share and their warped psyches. How far are they willing to go for what they want. 
but more so, are they willing to kill for it? This question is something both Kazutora and Mikey would have to answer going into their gang war. Valhalla vs. Toman is a battle of brothers. Kazutora is by all accounts crazy, but not without understanding. He's still able to maintain his calm when needed and uses his opponent's weakness against him, even going as far as to hit Mikey with the same attack he did to Shinichido. When he put an end to Shinichido, he was forced to choose sides, himself or Mikey. In his mind, Mikey was the cause of his suffering, so Kazutora chose himself above all others, and Baji stood beside him when he was at his lowest. The same way Baji stood beside Mikey, for so long. As stated before, Baji has been a wild card this entire arc, joining Valhalla, beating Chifuyu, and proclaiming he would aid in Mikey's murder. All of this to cut ties for a chance to stop Kisaki, a chance to save his friends from being manipulated into a trap. However, his suspicions of Kisaki would never be confirmed without any proof, and he had no way to prove it. So on his last legs, he leaves his treasures for Takemichi, someone who reminds him of Shinichiro, and passes on. Baji loved Toman. They are his friends, his family, and his home. Kazutora was a big part of that. He suffered with Kazutora because he had just as much responsibility for Shinichiro's death as he did. He defended his treasures with all he had to prevent their inevitable destruction. Kazutora just wanted to make you happy, Mikey. That's why he can't accept it, even though he killed your brother. To make himself believe he wasn't the bad guy, Kazutora had no choice but to decide you were his enemy. The story has Kazutora as Mikey's mirror in action and demeanor, even down to the people they've interacted with. The only difference is how these interactions end, one the murderer, the other the victim. But now Mikey has control and the second difference comes into play. Emotion. Mikey and Kazutora's faces are inversions of each other. A cheeky smile can be just as dangerous as a stoic straight face. The depths beneath both expressions are unknowable. It's only when the focus of both shifts to Baji that they lose all control of themselves. Kazutora cries while Mikey loses himself to anger. Again, I labeled Baji as a wild card and I stand by that description because his plan of action felt so wildly chaotic. Like he didn't have a real, reliable plan to begin with. His effect is very personal, and yes, he does end up saving his friends, but at the cost of himself. And it's not even him or his real influence in terms of words or interaction with them that stops it. It's his charm that brings everything to a head. The flashback of Toman's creation is the foundation of Mikey's character, where all of his closest friends come together with him. First meant to defend Kazutora against the Black Dragons, but now it's far beyond that. It's the start of a new era, where everyone could see the delinquents aren't just a bunch of troublemakers, but kids with something to prove and morals to back them up. A gang that would stand by one another no matter the odds. That is the Toman built by its founding members. The Toman Mikey and Kazutora forgot. The conclusion of this conflict is exactly what it should be with Toman and Valhalla joining together by way of Kazutora's formal reinduction into Toman's ranks even after all he's done. It's a reminder of the same kindness Mikey showed Pei and the true nature of his heart at the end of the day. On top of all this, Takamichi's nomination as Toman's first division captain shows there's still hope for him to change his future after failing to save Baji. However, this development does very little for the changes in the future as Toman is still evil and Takamichi is the reason Hina is dead in this future. A symbolic narrative beat towards Takamichi's repeated failed attempts to save her. Now, with another future in shambles, the only thing left to do is stop the man behind everything from altering the future. Kisaki Teta in my personal opinion, this arc is probably the best we've covered so far. Kazutora and Mikey's dynamic is especially enjoyable to read when picking up the story for a second read-through because you're able to pick up on stuff you never were before. The arc's name, Valhalla, is a very clever choice for this arc too, as in Norse mythology it is a place where fallen heroes in battle are received. This ties in with both the deaths of Shinichiro and Baji who directly influenced Mikey and Kasutora's descent. However, Baji embodies this more so because he falls in battle so he can save his two old friends. Speaking of fallen heroes, Takamichi's return to the future and facing the ramifications of his actions in this arc see him embody the theme of a fallen hero. A hero who wanted to save the woman he loved only to end up being her indirect killer and falling into a pit of despair with seemingly no way out. It is only through Naoto he can find the strength to stand again to fight. Kisaki outwitting him at the end with Chifuyu being put down is a sad end, yes, but one Takamichi must return to zero in order to rewrite. It's another step towards truth and real change. 
Valhalla is an arc about forgiveness. From Mikey and Kazutora reforging their relationship, to Naoto forgiving Takamichi for his part in Hina's death. Furthermore, these actions have lasting effects that will save Takamichi and will ring throughout the rest of the story, but that will be understood much later on. This has been my analysis of the Valhalla arc, and it's another arc in the books. Next time, we'll enter the Black Dragons arc, something I have read ahead on, and I can say for sure I am going to enjoy analyzing it. I hope you'll continue to join me on my journey through Tokyo Avengers, but in the meantime, stay safe out there and have yourselves a damn good one. I'll see you all next time.